The Twitterverse demanded it, and I shall make it so. Here's the start of my legendary solo Spartan Ops series with no deaths. Welcome, I'm RC Master, and this is Episode 4, Chapter 2, Rally Point on the map Two Giants. This is basically Valhalla, or Ragnarok. This is my current setup I'm using. It doesn't really matter so much what you use on this mission, because most of the time you're going to be in a Warthog anyway. Crimson and Majestic are online, Commander Palmer. Listen up, Spartans. You're both dispatched to locations where Jun Dama is rallying troops. This is actually quite a fun map to play on, I find, in Spartan Ops. Despite it being a Halo 3 multiplayer map, it actually does pretty well as a sort of firefight Spartan Ops map. So first things first is grabbing a Warthog. That'll help really f with all of the enemies in this area. And also picking up a couple of Marines. There should be about four hanging around the base. Here's one. And then I usually go around the side and pick up this guy. There are two guys on the turrets on top of the base. I can't even remember what this base is called. I can't remember whether it's red or blue base. Waterfall base. First objectives, bunch of Prometheans. There's a few crawlers running around initially, and a couple of knights, and a couple of watchers. They're trying to bring up turrets. Hopping out, I'm using my DMR trying to take them out before they get those turrets up. Not quick enough this time. You can be quick enough. Those turrets don't have to ever come up. I pucked up my Warthog there, letting the Marines get a shot on some of the Knights, hopefully taking out some of the Crawlers as well. Then I'm also yep, doubling the firepower, basically. In co-op, ideally, you'd probably want every person to have their own Warthog with an AI gunner in it. That'd probably give you the most firepower and the most speed. This is actually probably one of the easier missions I've done so far in Spartan Ops Legendary Solo. You can take it at your own pace to a large extent. You get even AIs to help you. There's plentiful ammunition. These boxes are basically infinite ammunition. I find it extremely difficult to tell apart the knights to start with. And you can tell them apart eventually, but not from this sort of distance, really. Like, now I can tell that there's some orange spikes on his head, back carapace, I don't even know what to call it. But from a certain distance, I find them really, really hard to tell apart. And it's especially difficult when the scatter shot kind of looks like the light rifle shots, when it, you know, it's unzoomed and it fires those three bursts. Now this is just sort of your classic Halo Warthog driving, getting the gunner into position. Actually surprisingly good against Knights. And the Warthog gun in this game is surprisingly powerful and accurate compared to previous iterations, which tended to be a lot more random, a lot more spray. But the Warthog itself is fairly weak. I mean against just sort of a couple of crawlers shooting you, peppering you with a few suppressors and stuff. I decided I would give this guy a suppressor because the knights tend to warp away if you're using rifles on them whereas automatic weapons they just don't seem to register as damaging that much which seemed pretty weird but that's the mechanic anyway so I'm gonna exploit it nothing to hit or activate down here it's just a little go there and then you can run away then of course you gotta run around the map being led across on a goose chase you know, considering the Prometheans are, can warp in to seemingly anywhere on the planet, it doesn't really strike me as making much sense as to them thinking they can ever set up any kind of base on the entire planet. So I'm not quite sure why they do. Oh yeah, running over crawlers is pretty fun. They can be quite dodgy. And then you get this sort of weird bright flash when you actually run them over and destroy them. Let's see if I can get one there. There you go. 
It's really weird. I don't quite understand why it does that. Flash also happens with the watches as well. But it's not quite as bright since it's above you. I was playing this in a dark room last night. Or, I can't remember when it was, in fact. And then if the screen is the only thing lit lighting the room and then there's this flash of you running over a crawler, it's like, wow, my eyes. See, the benefit of the Promethean enemy type, even though the teleportation thing inside is super, super cheap, it doesn't mean they can get in more enemies onto the battlefield really, really quickly. So they can keep up a pace of combat. Oh, yeah. Uh, race. As soon as this comes in, there's going to be two phantoms with race. I like to just jump in, get on behind them. This is on legendary solo. Like, you know, this will work on any difficulty. There's like a... I don't know how to describe it. I guess a, it's a... A glitch, not like a glitch, probably it's intentional, but they don't shoot at you while you're boarding an enemy vehicle like a Wraith. So you can effectively use this just to get onto the Wraith, get into position, and then you can let all the enemies make their way a bit further away from you, and wait till the Wraith is in a safer position for where you to actually come off. And then I can destroy it. That wasn't ideal, obviously, because it's got overcharged as soon as I came off. But you get the idea. The bulk of the enemies have moved off now and more or less safe. Unfortunately, the Marines aren't very smart, so they did decide to... Yeah, let's take this Warthog. I think one's just got murdered there. Good job, dude. And this guy, I don't know where he's going. Taken over from him immediately. Forget that. And then it's just more or less repeating what I was doing before. Considering how fun this was, I th running around Valhalla with a Warthog and some AI Marines, it's almost a little bit disappointingly short, this mission. Here we go, more Prometheans. You can cut this mission down so quickly with multiple people. Like on Heroic with four people, I think we were doing like six and a half minutes like, not even people that are particularly practiced or good at it. And it was, I think we were only running two Warthogs. Rather than, like, four. You can take, up like, four at once. You can be absolutely murdering everything. Oh, man. Just drove straight through that Promethean there. While well, it was still phasing. That was pretty weird. There's many cheap elements about the Promethean enemies. But I do like that disintegration thing. <laughs> it's particularly satisfying with something like the chain gun on the Warthog. So, Warthog tips? Do you want Warthog tips? I guess I'll give you some Warthog tips. Basically, you generally use it as a mobile turret, because that's its most effective mode of operation. Obviously you can run things over if you're getting bored, but that's not ideal. Generally you want to keep it so that your gunner doesn't have to keep turning all the time. You want to keep all the enemies in the same sort of general direction. So they can keep up the fire on all the enemies. Second Wraith, same thing. There's elites on this Phantom though, where they're much tougher to take out. Fortunately, my guy in the Warthog decided to stay in the turret, which was very good of him. I was worried he's going to gain it and drive off again and run into a bunch of elites and die. Fortunately, I picked an amazing place just here. None of the elites bothered him at all. That wasn't entirely intentional, that was just sort of look at the draw. Sort of anywhere around that rock behind there should be fine while those two phantoms are coming in. And considering how useful the guy in the side seat was, yeah, you could probably forego him even. I decided I'd just pick up uh, another Warthog. Might as well. It's fairly close to the end of the mission. 
There's just a few more enemies. See, and I'm just using the front of the Warthog to block shots from me and the windshield. And that also helps keep the gunner protected as well, keeps his legs hidden behind the main bulk of the vehicle. Just repositioning, trying to get the, give them a good angle. Smart elites shooting into a box. Good job, good job elites. I've currently got five of the released 25 missions. I'm gonna aim to have all of the missions done eventually, which will be 50. That'll be a lot of videos. I don't imagine the tactics will deviate too much from know when the spawns are gonna come in, pick your loadouts right for what weapons are on the map and what ammo boxes you have. But there will be a few sort of cool little tactics on all the maps. Sort of uh, little exploits of the AI, getting them to come to you in the right way. I think we're done with all the enemies in fact. Just have to hit a couple of buttons. Hear Palmer and Miller and somebody talking. Funnily enough, this man cannon here doesn't seem to actually get you through the middle of that. It actually seems to push you a bit too high. Look at that. See, why, why didn't why can't I bring him with me? A warthog in the next area would be so good. And often it's funny when there's m multiple people going through the portal at the same time. Well, going off the man cannon. You can hear a splattering sound and it sounds like you all die. So that's fun. So there you go. That was episode 4, chapter 2, Rally Point on the map Two Giants. Legendary solo, no deaths. Wasn't a particularly hard one. There are some much tougher ones than that. Those will be coming in the weeks and months ahead. So stick around for that. That was only 11 minutes 45 seconds. Not too bad. A few minutes off if you're doing it with four people. So here's some other videos you can check out. You've currently been watching Master RC, which is my bonus channel. My main channel is RCVGS, and I'll see you next time.